Hi church, it's great to see you today. We're on day number 17 of our 21 days of fasting. And today I'm gonna to talk to you um, with a focus on small groups and uh, teams. Um, I wanna to read to you today from the book of Daniel. It's Daniel 3, verses 16 to 30. So here we go. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, we... Uh, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he'll deliver us uh, from your majesty's hand. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know that your majesty, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you've set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. And the king's command was so urgent that the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers that took Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And these three men firmly tied fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and he asked his advisers, weren't there three men? that were tied up and threw into the fire. He said, look, I see a fourth man walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth man looks like the son of the gods. So Nebuchadnezzar approached the entrance of the burning furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, servants of the most high God, come out, come here. So they came out of the fire and the satraps and prefects and governors and royal advisors around them. They saw the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor a hair on their head was singed. Their robes were not scorched and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who would sent his angel to rescue his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any God except their own. Therefore, I decree that the, most, that the people of this nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego will be cut into pieces and their houses turned into piles of rubble for no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego into the province of Babylon. I read that Bible verse because I'm thinking about the lives of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They were exiles. They were in a place where they uh, shouldn't have been. And... Um, can be a little bit like us, like we, you know, we are. We're told, aren't we, in the Bible that we're we're like aliens in a in, in a land, in a foreign land. People will think we're weird because we've we follow this God that um, they can't see, and 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 we know that this God is real and true. So, you know, being part of our church is such a privilege. It's such a uh, a thing that is growing, and the fact that it's growing it means there's more people joining. There's more people becoming part of our community, which turns into we're needing more spaces in living rooms across to make people to help people feel seen, known, loved, connected, and found a commute to find a community. Because here's the thing, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they were part of a community with each other and some of the other exiles into Babylon. And the, as a part of their community, there, were, there was a smaller group of them that like were close together. They sort of helped each other on, they spurred each other on. And that is what happens when you're in a small group or you join a team in our church. You have people that are with you and around you. You take the large context of a Sunday and you bring it smaller either into a living room or as part of a team that helps serve to make a Sunday happen. And we got these three friends, exiles, like I said, living in a place where they weren't from, in a land that was directly opposing their worldview, making and, and, and making following God, like not a straightforward affair, actually. It was quite a difficult thing. They even had their names changed to attempt that they ensure that they were fully indoctrinated into this new world they were living in. And I don't know what that sounds like to you, but I think some of that sounds a little bit like 2024 to me living in a place that makes choosing God and choosing faith difficult, living somewhere where we feel like uh, our lifestyle or viewpoints aren't accepted. So all the more we need to have a community of people around us. They knew what they should and they shouldn't do because of their faith. And they had this group mentality and security. Can you imagine the actual in the moment thing where this person is saying, if you don't do this, you're going to you're going to be killed. I think the fact that Shadrach had Meshach and Abednego next to him and they're all together saying, no, we we actually know what there's a bigger purpose. And you being with me is actually going to help me to say yes to the right thing and no 
uh, to the wrong thing. And my belief in prayer for both teams and for small groups for us and as a church is that people will find community and that community would help them both outwork their own faith in 2024, but also outwork their faith in a place and a land in 2024 where, you know, there's technology coming in. We've got things like AI and things like all these different things that are coming in that we're having to think as Christians for the first time. How do we deal with this thing? How does the church respond to this stuff? Hey, do you know what? We're in a community of people. We know what we should say yes to. We need to know what we should say no to and choose the right thing and always put God first. So I'm praying today for small groups and for for teams that people would find community. People would find a place of uh, being able to do something that's bigger than they could just do by themselves because there's people with them, championing them and helping them. So when you're praying today, here's a couple of things for you. Uh, We pray for more people to join small groups and to find community outside of just a Sunday gathering. For more people to answer the call to become small group leaders, uh, to create an atmosphere and an environment where more people can uh, encounter community within our church. And for people to sign up to teams, not just for the fact that we need teams to make stuff run, but actually for the purpose, for the community and for the um, for the serving wider than just their own context. That actually we get to serve the body of Christ in Manchester through Audacious Church. Thank you. Have a great week and uh, enjoy the rest of your time fasting. We've got four days left. Uh, I'll see you on the other side. See you later.